I get it. You want to live a slow life, but sometimes life itself gets in the way. I've talked about my perfect slow living day before, and I love thinking about what I would do if I had just a free open day to live however I wanted, but let's be honest, most days are not that day. And you might be like this mom in my comments who was like, hey, like I have kids. There's no way I would ever have a day just to do everything all for myself. And so while I think that slow living is a lifestyle, it's sort of a habit that we have to grow in our own lives over time, I understand that there are days and there are seasons where it's hard to feel like you can slow down at all. And so if that's you, that's what this video is about. And look, if you're anything like me, I know you probably can't just tell yourself to slow down and magically make that happen, right? Um, but I do think that there are some things that you can do to intentionally calm yourself down, bring yourself back to the present moment and just slow down your pace of life, even if it's just incrementally, and that's going to make a big difference over time. So in this video, we are going to talk about 10, what I'm calling beginner level, beginner friendly um, tactics to slow down your life in five minutes or less. And then we have some that are a little bit more advanced. They maybe take a little bit more planning and effort. Um, but they also can be accomplished in five minutes or less once you've done the work to get them in place. And the reason I'm separating them this way is not so that you have to feel bad about being a beginner or being advanced, but because I think that for most of us, um, I'm guilty of this too. Sometimes life gets so busy and crazy and we get so ahead of ourselves that we forget how to slow down. And so if you're finding yourself like really, really struggling to slow down, to practice contentment, to be present in the moment, then I'm going to start with the easier things to do. And then we will move on to the things that maybe you can do if you've already implemented some of the easier practices. So that's enough of that. Let's get to the ideas. Okay, so here are the first 10 that I recommend you try, um, the beginner level ones, if you will. And, and yeah, there are 10 here. Um, if some of them sound too simplistic to you or you're just like, oh, I'm, I'm ready for something a little bit more, go ahead and watch till the end because I'll have some bonus ones there. But the first one on my list is to take a breather. And I mean this literally. Focus on your breath. If you find yourself just like really tense or rushing around and you need to slow down very quickly, something that I find helps a lot is to do some breath work. And so you're just going to breathe into your abdomen for a set amount of time. I like to do four or five seconds, hold it for that same amount, and then breathe out. Bonus points if when you breathe out, you push it out through your mouth, and then when you breathe in, you're going in through your nose. Now, this is not anything you have not heard before, and I'm not recommending that you spend like five minutes just breathing. Normally, if I'm trying to slow myself down really quickly, I will breathe in as many times as I need to feel myself calm down, um, which is usually like three to five on a you know normal busy day, and then I will focus on breathing through my abdomen. This helps Tell your body that you are not in danger. Um, it helps decrease stress. And it also just helps you to take things a little bit more slowly because you are allowing yourself time to pay attention to your breath and take your focus off of whatever the next thing is. My second tip is to have something going. And I don't mean like have a side hustle or project. I mean, like have something that you really enjoy, something that slows you down, whether that is like making bread or painting something or reading a book or knitting or whatever it is that you like to do. It could even be like going for a walk. Have something incomplete that you can return to and work on for a few minutes. For me, a lot of times I will leave out a watercolor piece that I'm working on for a few days and every once in a while I'll just go over to it when I need a little bit of a slow down uh, break, I will go over to it. I will paint a few things and then I will go back to the things that I need to be doing. Um, another option might be if every time you feel yourself starting to rush, starting to speed up, take a you know five minute break, go out and walk a few steps and then come back to whatever it is you need to do. The walking actually goes pretty nicely with my next tip, which is to get outside. 
Um, I just think there's something so beautiful about the fact that no matter how much rushing or anxiety or urgency we feel in our lives, the natural world goes at its own pace. Sometimes that pace is very fast. Most of the time when it's observable, it's very slow. And so getting outside, feeling the sunshine on your face and soaking up the vitamin D, yes, like that's amazing. Um, but even just being in contact with the natural world, getting out for just a second, you can sort of see the patterns of nature, the way that God has created the world. And you see that it is okay to grow at your own pace. And I think that's really beautiful. If the weather doesn't permit, or you're just not feeling like going outside, you can also opt to take a break without a phone. You can do this anywhere, anytime. Um, step away from the thing that is stressing you out for a minute or two. Don't grab your phone because that's a mistake that I often make. And I think that most of us often make is that we try to distract ourselves instead of returning to ourselves. So, you know, something is making us anxious or making us feel stressed or hurried and we see that thing, we don't like it. And so we think, oh, I need to get away from that. And so we actually run faster to a distraction instead of returning back to the present moment and what's actually going on. And it can be a lot less fun to be paying attention to what's going on in your emotions and your brain and your body when you're feeling stressed. But I guarantee that you will feel better at the end of the day and your life will not feel like it is hurling out of control at a breakneck speed if you are able to take a one to five minute break every once in a while when you need it, just get away from the thing that is stressing you, leave your phone outside and take a minute for yourself to do anything or nothing, just not your phone. I also think there's an argument that could be made for just reading in like little tiny short bursts. I don't think that when you're reading for like less than five minutes at a time, you're really going to pick up on much or learn a lot, or really like get much of anywhere on a novel. But there is something very centering about holding a book in your hands and just reading something, the orderly motion of moving your eyes across the words and figuring something out with your mind. It can be very centering, at least for someone like me who loves reading. Um, I would say don't pick a book that is going to stress you out or make you feel like you're not doing enough um, in those five minutes. Don't be trying to maximize that time, but also don't pick up a book that might tempt you to go for longer than you need to. Another thing that you can do, and I'm actually like obsessed with this idea, is um, instead of reading, you can write for just like a few minutes. I call this micro journaling. I don't do very well at sitting down and writing like, out like a whole long journal entry for my day. But if a thought comes to me, I like to write it down on a scrap of paper and then transfer it to a journal later. And so I'll take, you know, like maybe two or three minutes after I'm finished with one task and going to the next to just sort of write something down or an idea that I had during that time. I feel like it really sparks a lot of creativity for me to be able to have just a little bit of a creative outlet to write down little bits about my life. And it doesn't have to, you know, be in any sort of order. It doesn't have to have a lot of context just to write down something that I'm thinking or feeling that struck me as important. Of course, if you don't want to get like super deep, <laughs> that's okay. There's also the classic of making or getting a beverage. And I think this one's popular for a reason, right? Like there's something very calming about holding uh a beverage in your hand, especially if it's warm. And I think that grabbing a warm beverage actually before you go into something that is stressing you out, it can actually really help you like slow yourself down, savor your, the moment that you're living in just a little bit more. So big fan of making or going and getting a beverage if you have the time or opportunity. I don't think there's any shame in that. It's definitely part of a slow life, especially and here's the key, especially if you take the time to enjoy the taste, because engaging your senses, being present in the moment, that's going to help you slow your life down just a little bit. Another idea that I like to incorporate after reading Life in Five Senses by Gretchen Rubin is this idea of making things smell good. Now, she doesn't necessarily say that you have to go around making everything smell good in that book, but she does talk about how we all have neglected senses. We have senses that we use a lot which for me, that would probably be like my eyesight. And so if I need a really quick way to slow myself down, 
I will take advantage of the fact that I'm not normally paying attention to the smells around me and I will put on some perfume or light a candle or uh, put some water and essential oil in a diffuser and I will make myself smell. And yeah, it's breathing, but for me, it's really actually about grounding myself in the moment, taking a minute to savor uh, the smells that I'm usually too busy to notice. And so for you, if smelling is like one of your like main things, like congrats, honestly, I, I don't know how you do that, but you may not want to make something smell good. You may actually want to pick something that engages a sense that you don't normally use. And then I guess you could sort of categorize a lot of the tips I've already talked about this way. But another thing you can just simply do is bribe yourself into slowing down by giving yourself a treat. So if there is something that you really enjoy eating, maybe consider, you know, going out and getting it to help you slow yourself down for a minute. If there's something you really enjoy doing and you can do it in, you know, five minutes or whatever the time is that you have, let yourself, you know, do it, whether that's going outside and taking a walk or bouncing a ball or, you know, sitting on the couch for a minute and just like closing your eyes while you listen to a song. I mean, like, I'm not going to judge. I've done all of those things before. So like, whatever it is that you want to do, do it as long as you enjoy that activity so much that you will slow down in order to engage with it. I think that's the key right there is to just really be in touch with yourself, sort of nourish yourself in the ways that you enjoy to be taken care of. And that can help you slow down and you can carry that attitude with you throughout the rest of your day. The flip side of this is that you can also slow down by nurturing something outside of yourself. Um, normally I feel like, at least in my case, my humans take a little bit more than five minutes to feel like thoughtfully cared for and nurtured, but my dog loves a five minute walk. My plants love a little quick water, like taking care of and nurturing something outside of yourself is also a really great way to remind yourself that there's more to life than whatever the thing is that is causing you to rush around and stress. And also like it feels good. Okay. So believe it or not, those were the 10 easy ideas that I had to help you slow your life down. And so now I have an additional six here for those of you who are just so advanced in slow living, or if you really want to go deeper, then you can implement one, you can implement all of these. I think maybe don't implement all of them at once because that sounds overwhelming. And I think the whole point of kind of slowing our lives down is to not be so overwhelmed and stressed all the time. I could be wrong, but that's the point of it for me anyway. So don't do all of them at once, but definitely like, you know, save this video somewhere that you can come back to and refer to it so you can grow your slow living skills over time. So here are the advanced tactics. Okay. The first one is to do a mindfulness exercise or like engage all of your senses. So there's a lot of different ways that you can be mindful and really engage with the world around you, be present in this moment. Um, my therapist has had me walk through quite a few different ones. You can find them online. You can look them up on YouTube. There's a lot of different ways. If you're struggling to practice mindfulness, I think it's very helpful to have someone go through the exercises with you for the first time. So if you have a therapist or can start going to a therapist, that's a great place to do it because they're professionals and they know what they're doing. If you don't, or you can't afford a therapist, or that's just not an option for you for whatever reason, I would say like try to connect with friends or family members who have some experience with this and help have them help you walk it through or like troubleshoot it with you because it's not hard once you get started, but it can be a little bit hard to like get over the mental barrier of like, how do I do this? It's intimidating. I've never done anything like this before. And so having somebody to just sort of help you and believe in you is super helpful. This is not something that you're going to be able to just like pick up, look up a YouTube video and then do it right away. So that's why it's in this sort of advanced category. But I will say that if you have already been working on living a slow life and being more in touch with yourself and your emotions, that this should be a little bit easier for you than it might be for somebody else who is starting from like not doing any of that. Another way that I think it's really great to like kind of slow down your life and make you feel less like it is hurling out of control and make you feel more like you are blessed and content and happy um, is to, and this is going to be really wordy. I don't know how to say this like more succinctly, but 
is to do something that even though it takes extra time will help you feel less like things are out of control later in your day. So one example for me is that I take a lot of time to plan my day, plan my weeks, plan my quarters. Um, you may have seen like some of my videos, I'll link to one in the cards, but um, planning for me, even though it might seem a little bit antithetical to slow living actually helps me embrace a slow living mindset a lot more because I know exactly what it is that I'm hoping to accomplish. And I'm able to reprioritize and change things as new ideas and rhythms come up. And so that I'm able to still attend to the important things while embracing a slow living ethos. So taking some time to just plan your day, put together a quick to-do list or something that can be extremely helpful in helping you like, okay, take a breath, slow down, see what you actually want to do with your day and then figure out what you have to do and, and what else can slide to create more room for like a slower pace. Another example is documenting your life. So this is sort of like the um, digital version of micro journaling, I would say, is when I have super, super crazy days and it's something that I have to get done and there's not really much else I can do about it. Like I did this um, before we left on vacation last time. Um, I had a really crazy day where I had to write a bunch of articles for a client and I, ha I wanted to get all or most of them done in one day because I wanted to have time to prepare for the vacation and not be stressed right before we left. And so what I did to keep myself sane throughout that day was I just like documented what I was doing the entire time. I would get out my phone and I would give myself a little like one to two minute update. And I didn't use that footage for anything, but it made me feel like I was in control of the story I was telling. And so I think that that could be a really fun thing to do. You don't have to publish it. You don't have to make a YouTube video about it or anything. You can just have it for yourself, for your own enjoyment. But it's a way of taking back the story of your day and of your life that I think is really powerful and beautiful and fun. The next way to slow down is to take something off your plate or to realize that you don't have to give 100% to everything. I feel like perfectionism is one of the main drivers of a stressed out, anxious, hurried life because we never have enough time to do everything that we want to do with excellence. We don't have enough time to do it all well. I think that things are worth doing well. Um, I was recently reading Slow Productivity by Cal Newport and he makes just a really good case for that um, in his book where he talks about how, you know, sometimes we need to clear out the things that are not important. So we have the proper time to devote to making the most important things the best that they can be. And I believe that wholeheartedly. Um, but I think that for most of us, we have a lot of things that are important to us. And we think that all of those things deserve 100% of our effort, attention, energy, money, all of those things. And it spreads us too thin. And, you know, I'm going to sound like the simplicity, minimalism, longer than I am. <laughs> but not all of us have to be doing all the things that we're doing all the time. Yeah, there are things that only you can do. Only you can be married to your spouse. Only you can raise your children. Only you can start the business that you're dreaming of starting or write the book that you're dreaming of writing. There's a lot of things in your life who like you're not the only person who could do them. Um, and so it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to drop things off of your schedule, especially things that, you know, don't, you don't need in order to live. And it's also okay to say, you know what, I'm going to keep some of these things, but I'm not going to give them hundred percent of my effort all the time because I just don't have that much effort to give that, that has to go to the people that I care about the most. That has to go to the work that I do for a living, whatever your thing is that is most important to you. Like that's what needs your most effort and attention and your best focus and your best work. And you can't give your best to every single thing. And so you need to be really picky about what those things are. And I think you could even make a case for the fact that like, maybe depending on other factors in your life, maybe your job isn't the thing that gets 100%. I'm never going to argue for doing a bad job for your employer, but some jobs do not require you to do 100%. There are a lot of jobs where like, if you want to get promoted, you have to give 150%. But if you are okay with staying where you are, 
you can give 80% and that's fine and you can have a very happy life. I think that's a perfectly legitimate and beautiful way to live. And if that's what the way that you want to live in the season of your life, go for it. Okay. This next one probably takes the most homework (laughs) of any of the ones that I'm going to talk about in this episode. And this is to think about your values and choose how you spend your time accordingly. So I'm reading a book right now called At Your Best by Kiri Newoff. And in it, he talks about categorical decision-making. And I'm not sure that I like that phrase. I think that might be like the industry standard phrase. I don't think he made it up, but like categorical is a very harsh word to me. I don't know if you, if you have different thoughts on the word categorical, let me know in the comments. But um, basically what he's saying is you have a category of things and you make a decision one time about that category and then it makes all the rest of the decisions easy and you can tweak them um, if you know you do a bad job or your circumstances change or whatever but like for example I have a categorical decision in my life right now that this is the only YouTube or creative type project that I am going to work on I have a business to run I have a husband and dog to spend time with and friends and family and other people that I love. Um, and I have this YouTube channel and I cannot tell you how many times it's at least once a week, but it's usually multiple times a week. I have an idea for a new YouTube channel or a blog or a podcast or something. And it's not related to this channel. It's a totally different topic, something else that I'm interested in. And I have just made the decision that for right now in this season of my life, I don't have time to do this channel well. And another channel or podcast or whatever. So I put it on something called my someday maybe list so that if I ever want to come back to it, or if I come across a really good idea for it, I can just add all of those things to my file there in Asana. And right now, this is the place that I'm making videos. This is where I am channeling most of my creative energy. And that has been a very good, very healthy, very life-giving decision for me. But that's actually a pretty superficial way to look at value-based decision-making because that's just like, I just made that decision for my sanity. Um, Really what it comes down to is you want to be crystal clear on the kind of person that you want to be. I want to be the kind of person who sticks things out. I want to be the kind of person who helps people build the lives that they want through being like very selective and intentional about what they allow in or put into their lives. And so right now, this YouTube channel is a good decision for me. But you need to be really crystal clear on how, like on who you want to be before you can decide how you want to make those decisions. And then I think everything else kind of flows from there and can get a little bit easier. It's still not 100% easy, but it does make it a little bit easier to say no when you need to say no or make those categorical decisions or those hard calls. Okay, this next one. Is one that I really love and it's called leave a few minutes early. It really works for like any area of life, but I was thinking of it in like a work context because at my last job, when I worked for someone else, um, I sat in a lot of meetings and you would have these days of like back to back to back meetings. And it was really difficult to like gather your thoughts. Well, I would just feel my brain turning into like mashed potatoes over the course of the day because it was just so many conversations and so many questions, and so many like side tangents, and I never had a moment to really like collect my thoughts and get a lot of clarity, and I would just sort of slip into this like afternoon coma that was just, it was not good. So something that I think would have been really helpful for those types of situations, but also for situations if you're like loaded up on extracurriculars or commitments after work, or just really in any sort of situation, is to leave like three to five minutes early. It's not really enough time to make a difference in whatever the thing is that you are doing, but it's enough time to give yourself a minute to collect yourself, to take a breath, like Juliet Funt talks about in a minute to think, just to like give yourself a minute or two, have a little bit of white space so that you can just get yourself um, oriented from moving from the thing that you were doing to the thing that you're doing now. I think that there's a lot of confusion and just not good things that happens when you force our brain to task switch over and over and over and over again. And so if you can leave just a few minutes early in a way that like nobody's going to notice, you can say, oh yeah, I've got to go to the next meeting or I've got to go to the next thing. Leave just like a couple minutes early. 
nobody's going to care, but you will feel so much better. And then the final thing I just put it on here because I just did this today and it was wonderful is to spend uninterrupted time with someone you love. It doesn't have to be super long. Um, I think, you know, maybe a little longer than five minutes on this one is usually ideal, but spend uninterrupted time, no phones, no nothing, just talking to them, being present with them. You don't have to do anything or you could do whatever you want. There's nothing like it for helping you just slow yourself down and go, okay, you know, even if I don't finish this project at the level that I want to, or things don't go my way today, there are things that are beautiful and worth living for. And this person is still going to love me. I think that that gives you the courage to slow yourself down. And it's just also very powerful, I think, in a psychological way, because you have like that co-regulation. So yeah, there they are. My ideas for slow living, even on days that do not feel very ideal for slow living, the days that you're busy, stressed, and anxious. Um, most of these only take about five minutes to implement a couple of them. You know, you may want to take longer. Some of them take the pre-work, especially the ones that I mentioned right at the end. But overall, these are all things that you can do throughout your days, switch it up, change it up to help slow yourself down and really live in the moments of your life. I know we can't all have, you know, perfectly open, relaxing, stress-free days all the time. I mean, I certainly can't, and I have a more flexible schedule than most people. But I do think that trying to practice slow living every chance we get is one of the best ways to reduce stress and like actually enjoy our lives. If we really want to be content in the here and now, be present with our loved ones and live a life that's centered on what matters most, we have to be willing to slow down even when everything in life is working against us to speed us up. So speaking of which, if you would like to see sort of the opposite of this video, um, where I talk about some ways that I would like intentionally enjoy a slow day at home, if I had like a perfect day where I could do whatever I wanted, you can check that out here. And thank you so much for watching this video, for liking it, for subscribing. That means the world to me. And I will see you in my next video where I talk about how to live a slower, more intentional, and simplified life. Bye!